B200 van from 1972. Gonna get into some more rust repair. We're, we're counting down on the, the last of it. There's a few spots we're gonna try to hit today, or at least this weekend, and uh, maybe next weekend we'll finish it out. But what we got is this battery tray area right here. It's all rotted out, remember from the last video? Uh, it leaked really bad, it pretty much demolished about 90, 85, 90 percent of the battery tray. So we did this here. We got a template made from it and then we went ahead and just removed it. So it has like a large lip here and it'll, it'll fit up in there about like this. And we got the dimensions as close as we could. Uh, the other night I spent a few hours getting a template made off of this and it had a very basic measurements. It was pretty cool this which is just a, a duplicate of this and if you fold it together that's how it would go right there and then I counted for the, the fold down here which we'll have to remove from the support here so what I'm going to do is start to remove this now I can be destroyed and then we're going to make a template for this piece and the good thing is if you look at the opposite side it's not different it's just an opposite it's this mirror image opposite so when I get down in here you can see where the lip rotted off of here kind of in the back side of this so we do have our points of connection right there but if we need any help with anything we just refer to that side and reverse it so I'll probably cut it I'm gonna guess about here and over but I got to get this part out first and then we'll actually have to make this piece here too so there's four total pieces we will have to be made probably out of 16 gauge. So uh, come on along, Let's see what we can do. so we got that piece removed completely from here uh, might not matter as much right here this whole section might get cut but we'll look at it at, and that's kind of based on how badly deeply pitted this area here is so I might be able to come up into that remove the left uh, rest of it and then go across and eliminate all so what I was talking about, uh, getting the template off the opposite side, it might be actually easier to do that now that I see it. You're just, you're gonna lay your template in here or your paper for it. I cut a piece, it's, fits it well enough. Sorry. The lip ends right there and it goes all the way the length. If you look at it through here, you'll get a better idea. See how I can lift that up and it's very straight. So it'll set on top of this lip flange here and uh, just conform to that uh, until it gets to about right here. Now, you could make the template off this side, but actually I just think it would be easier to do it over here because it, it kicks up in the same spot. If you just take an exact, push it down in there like that, and make sure that flat edge back there stays flush against the, the fender well and then hold it in there real tight make sure it comes all the way down and see how you will you will have a lip that comes comes downward and it's right in behind here about where that area I showed you what you can do is just fold that up to give yourself that slack so we give it that slack right here see that and you just no specific amount just give yourself an inch or so and then just pinch it down in there. Like that. Now when we go to, when I get my other hand free from the camera. Okay, so you can press that up against there. So you got this lip and that lip will eventually go down. 
But actually, if you go to reverse this piece and completely flip it the other direction, that lip would be fine where it is. But just for the sake of learning it and just making it simple, we will press all that back in there, make sure it's in place. And then we can just take our scissors when need be and we'll clip it in spots to, to relieve it. So this needs to go and fold down here. So we can take some scissors and cut into it where it makes this bend here. It even makes that bend and allow us to flatten everything out. We need some relief, kind of like the relief cuts we did in the metal, but you need to do relief cuts on the template. So I think we can cut one maybe about there and then here. And they both point towards this corner here and this corner here. And again, make sure you hold it down tight. You don't want it moving around on you. It's hard to do sometimes. And if they let you rip it a little bit, that's fine too. Just let it go ahead and do that. Just form it into place. Maybe a little bit more here. And then I would say to make this one a bit easier, cut that at that edge. You should be able to, yeah, just come right down with it like that. Now you take a pencil and give us a good. I want to highlight, like, say if you was building this edge here, see there's a corner right here, you'd kind of highlight the corner. Well, I want to do that same thing here. So make sure this is pressed down exactly where it needs to be. And just highlight the corner. One thing about having dirtier gloves is wherever you rub it, it'll highlight as well. But I want it to be kind of on the spot there. I just added this piece and then what we'll do again press it all down and especially in the area you're working really good and we know this lip will continue through here like that and then we can highlight it if we don't see it that well my fingers are dirty enough you can kind of use it to that advantage and cut it back there so then you'll just cut this piece back up, eliminate that, and you'll have your full shape. So when we have our piece formed, it should be pretty much just like that. It fits up against the fender well really good. It comes down to this lip, it's rolled down. Now remember we will just reverse this, we'll just basically turn it over and, and pull everything down the other way, bend this up, and it will fit right in there. And this will give us three of our primary pieces. Now I went ahead and did a board. We set this up to show where we're at on everything because sometimes it gets a little confusing where you got to go next. So this will highlight our left and right hand quarter panels. This is what we need to do on the body. And then here's our battery tray area. So we got part one, part two, part three, and part four. Right? One, two, and three. So that fourth one, it's just a reminder that there's a fourth piece and that will be this little guy right here. Really simple to make here. Just basically an L bracket. It's kind of long. So we'll go ahead and get this template cut out and uh, You've seen enough of that, so we won't get into that on the on film on camera right now. So we'll jump ahead to when we have all the metal pieces ready to go in here, and we'll show you how it works. All right, so we're working on this apron piece here. Uh, it's the last piece that needs. Uh, some basic fabrication, I guess. So, what we did, 
we just reversed our template and then cut this out and laid it down this way. We've got our rough bends here that would duplicate this edge here. And we have our kick up here where it comes up. And uh, which that would start right about here. Can't really see it, I know. But so far, so good. Uh, our next challenge is to see how there's a, you can see the underpiece here sticking out. Well, that's where this bends down. That's where it'll get probably a little more complicated because you're getting these different angles and the metal doesn't naturally want to fold that way. But sometimes we can make little cuts, just something to help it squeeze over. So I'm going to lay that up in there and get a mark where the apex of this bend is and then we'll see uh, if we can get this to bend over. Alrighty, alrighty. See this piece right here? We have been working on it pretty good. Very complex piece considering the tools and the methods that we have. So of course this drop in here and we got to trim that back panel up a little bit for it to fit into. Uh, one thing that was erroneous, so to speak, was I had to add a little piece here, like a wedge-shaped piece, welded that on. And then where we made our relief cuts to make our bends, I just took little corner pieces and welded them in there to make it all smooth so that it would kind of resemble that side, okay? Now we will, you know, clean this up a little bit and re-drill the holes for any aproning that may be attached to that. So, our four pieces are all made, and we even got this one set up right here. If you look, it's a pretty nice little fit um, where the battery acid had eaten that. This one was here, about like that. We got a new piece made to fit right in there, and got the hole drilled. So there's that, and um, not a bad thing about it is some of the rust See, it's kind of thin right there. Yeah, it's well down in there. And if we have to, if we can't get any good weld on this, from this side, we'll prop the jacket up, take the wheel off, and get in there, and we can just run a new piece of, like an angle, which is kind of what it looks like there. And then, uh, then we'll have to address this frame. I mean, you probably don't have to. It's still very, very thick but it just looks kind of rough and where that battery screwed it up a little bit. But um, so what we're gonna do, we got our lip here. We wanna clean our lip up really good and then clear the old lip off here to where the old piece was and then there's some here. And then get a nice bare area to where we can weld to and not feel like we are leaving a bunch of rust in there. So we're gonna go through that with a wire wheel and some uh, sanding pads and stuff like that. Oh, hey, look. We got another piece we have to make. That's what you call one of the most surprise pieces. Let me get the light in here. See that right there, the black abyss? That's where the lip that you see under it, I was grinding it, and it weakened the area and kind of caved in a little bit. And that lip is where the bottom of this piece that we're making went in there. Well, I'm guessing enough of the acid went through. You can see it's all pitted. There's a little bit of a pinhole over here. And uh, so really simple little piece. It's just in kind of a tight spot. I'm going to try to cut it out. And that's one of the hard parts, just cutting it out. And then uh, we'll put a new piece in there and then we we'll, should be able to build out the best I could figure. And then I'll have to get this lip off here. And we're pretty good up to this point. And we cleaned some of that up. So yeah, we'll make another little template, just a little flat piece, almost like a, just a little rectangle. We'll chop that out and we'll try to weld it in. All right, it didn't take too long to get into this. Uh, went ahead and chopped that out. Went ahead and just cut a part of the lip because we noticed it was really thin as well as the piece underneath it. And it was just easier to cut out both of them as opposed to trying to chisel it out. So here's the piece that will go in place of the bottom We'll fit it in there. It's ready to go. And then we've got our 
little puzzle piece with the lip bent into it and it's trimmed and ready to go in right there that's good uh, we'll get that welded in and we should be ready to start reversing this process might be a little slow uh, kind of getting all this trimmed back in but I think we're we're almost there to start reversing everything so all right okay so we've got the first piece in that's just a little lip right here I'm gonna finish welding that up and then our next piece that'll cover over this hole will go on and you get to follow through the sequence just after we get it welded each piece and you just see how uh, how simple it really is once it starts going back together just the actual work involved right so all right so there is yet another patch that I had to make just make patch overall or not patch overall but piece number seven that we had to fabricate I made the piece it goes inside here, right? I just showed you that. And as I looked at the area above it, it looked like it was uh, not as badly pitted. There was pitting, though. That's what this is. And if you look, here's my new piece. And when I would try to weld into this, it just kept blowing it up, blowing it up. It's just too thin. And when you cut it out, you really see it. But the pitting didn't look as bad as it did down here where the piece we had to cut out originally. So went ahead and made it yet another piece and we might have to trim this out just a little bit just to get the fit in there but it should go in that spot there so we'll work on this and I'm pretty sure we are out of the, the pitted area here there's just a very slight bit in this corner but up above it and all over to the side and of course on your piece it should weld in pretty uh, snug and pretty strong so that's how it goes all right, so we got this piece in. We roughed it in pretty good there. Uh, sanded a lot of this down, worked it down, buffed it down, I should say. And now we're gonna go ahead and try to get this guy to fit. I know there needs to be a little trimming back here. So, see where that light is, that little pinhole light? That should be right about there on that flange. Bring it up. We'll uh, work it around, make sure it's flush down there. And then we'll trim up this back piece to fit this. And we should be in pretty good shape. All right, so we went ahead and prepped up this area. Put some sealer on it, even back in here. And then we are ready for the piece. We went ahead and drilled the spot holes in it. Spot weld holes there, plug welds, whatever you want to call it. A little bit of sealer on the front, back in these edges. This is where it'll meet up on that edge right there. And we went ahead and trimmed that piece out. I think we have a slight gap going on down here, but not too bad. So it should fit down in there pretty good. About like so. Sealer dries. We will start tacking away at it. And it should start moving pretty quick after that. It'll all be brand new metal right now so this piece is uh, about 90 percent and did pretty much the whole weld here we got a couple touch-ups we did the spot welds I'm gonna put a flange on here that goes down I uh, realized that needed to go on there and it'll go up against this wall that's what we had to cut out that whole mess earlier that's because of that flange right here I have a small tack weld holding it up where it needs to be here I'm gonna run a couple holes through here and then we'll have a good spot weld section and then uh, the next piece will be the little upright that'll go from here down to there and it'll cover this and then it'll be the the other two pieces outside of that on the home stretch it's taking shape literally so we're doing really good here we had got this smoothed out and uh, we're gonna do this piece right here it is ready to go in it'll fit right in there like a little puzzle piece and then we'll just go ahead and stitch all this together and then we'll run a, another maybe a spot weld here and get these done out while we're while we're here doing it knock that part out and then we'll take this piece and slip it in there weld it up against that smooth it out a little bit and then we will be ready to put the tray on top of that so almost there almost there big job
All right, so we're getting down to the nitty gritty of this. And here's the, the whole objective here of the battery tray. From once this rotted, everything rotted out too. So I have the brace that holds this tack right here and right here through the front uh, fender well radiator support, okay? Now, we have the location here where this flange went. Remember, we took the uh, dimensions from this, at least the whole outward dimension, off of the original one. There was just the rim left. So that was good enough to get one off. So we do know it should fit roughly right about there. And it sets flat on top of this bracket, okay? So I got the bracket aligned so where it is level, um, it doesn't fit flush against that, and the old one didn't either. So I felt like we're pretty honest about that. Now before I go tacking this in, which I do have spot weld hole drill here and then here, and it sets pretty much center on there. So I will take the battery and set it on there to make sure that it's not too far this way, it's getting jammed, and then, then you regret welding it on there and we have to break it all loose. We also have a proportioning valve for the brakes and it hangs over about an inch, inch and a quarter maybe, over that corner here. So I'm going to grab the battery and see what's going on. Remember it's just sitting in there so it might tip over. So if we have it sitting here, we have room here, we got a good two and a half, three inches maybe. And then we're clear from the proportioning valve and the firewall. It's not touching that. This wiring, which is the bulkhead wiring for the dash and the rest of the van from the engine, uh, it's going to be up here. Uh, over here on this side, our wiring harness that runs through is not pinched or anything like that. So I think we're good to go. And I'll just put a small mark on it. One, I'll put one on the actual bracket, this piece, and then I'll just do one on the tray itself, just to show where it aligns with the side of this. Um, I'm just putting little scores on it, so when I take this out, it might rattle it loose. Okay, so that back up, make sure it looks straight. It does, it looks really nice. And we line it up and come this way just a little bit. So now we are ready to spot weld the tray to the bracket and then we'll go forward and reinforce the bracketry to the apron. And that'll mean back here and doing a they had a booger weld that kind of went along the edge of it. I think that was just to help reinforce it. So I'll go ahead and re duplicate that. And it does look like it helped, especially when you get that weight on there. got her in there aside from touch up which will be in its own course of videos and we've uh, started one of those we have this part of it done okay main objective was to go out to this brand new fabricated homemade battery tray and we got her spot welded here three spots here and then there's three spots against the inside of the fender well it's welded to this brace that is fashioned after the original one and so it's spot welded here and here uh, we got two spot welds on the front so it's pretty sturdy 
and then underneath that from here all the way back around over the top against the inside of there and all the way up to here we made the curved uh, lipped everything type of piece right there and got it to fit had to add some little extra pieces and that was my mistake again not perfect but we can struggle through this together and if sometimes uh, you all might make mistakes back like that and feel like you're that you're uh, not capable but that's not true you can always extend yourself and by extending the piece if need be or cut it you know uh, sometimes our templates aren't as honest or we don't hold them down the way we probably should so then we live and learn we also had this piece right here which is a nice little pass, patch piece and then back on the inside we had some surprise pieces had initially one and then uh, the piece wasn't large enough because when you started to weld into the area above it it was too thin so we went ahead and cut that out and shaped it it was kind of a strange shape and we got it involved and in place and we are all welded up now so there's some buffing that we're going to do on some of this and we need to get some uh, tie downs for the battery but the battery does set in here we test fit it before we put it in you just saw that hopefully and it clears everything around here from the wiring to the prop valve to the, uh, anything else of course it's going to obviously clear the hood so thank you for watching thank you for uh involving yourself in this video and if you've been catching the rest of our project here we are daggone near done with the sheet metal work here uh, there might be something that pops up but as far as we started doing all of this in early january and we've been documenting pretty much all of it from the floors to this area right here which was a great big video area here we did some of this down through here all this here we rebuilt this completely from scratch as well as did the cab corners some other little patch pieces because we had to do uh, rebuild the spring perch assemblies in there both sides so there was the other cab corner some of the floor sections in here so we're going to go ahead and cut this off we got two new panels coming in one from this side and one for that side because there's some rust just like there was over here it's up in the wheel lip and then the lip itself on the outside Again, like I said, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Who's Your Garage? Instagram, Who's Your Garage? All right. Uh, if you like what you see here, you want to see more, keep up to date with us. Make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell, and it'll make sure you get all the notifications when we upload something. We like to do it at least once a week, usually on a Monday morning, Monday afternoon, something like that. And if we get a chance, we'll add some other videos uh, throughout the week. Uh, sometimes the side projects that might start happening a little bit more here uh, as we get away from the pure sheet metal so again thanks see you next time uh -huh.